the weekend, Canadian authorities cleared out protesters in the capital city of Ottawa, arresting uh, dozens of so-called uh, truckers. So now, prior to resorting to the deployment of police forces, uh, Justin Trudeau, the uh, Prime Minister, invoked the country's emergency act to freeze the bank accounts of those who participated and assisted in this occupation. So now all of this was, of course, covered by Fox News, who breathlessly sat around waiting for the moment to call this, this one particular thing, the end of freedom everywhere. So now Laura Trump, she's going to talk about how, oh, it, it, it not only are the riot or uh, the truckers, the occupiers in this case, uh, not going to be treated fairly, they're actually going to get treated worse than the rioters during the George Floyd protests. And she's going to start out with that insanity. Take a look. They're not going to be treated like the summer of 2020 uh, rioters or peaceful protests, as, as we heard. You know, the interesting thing to me in all of this is to see the way that liberals, no matter if it's on our side of the border or in Canada, have used the police as pawns. Look at the summer of 2020. That was all about defund the police, right? The police and law enforcement were the enemies, and, and we had to defund them. What? How did this how did this turn into a conversation about defund the police? Which by the way, liberals and, and, and by the way, th this is this is what Fox News continues to talk about, continues to lie about. And in conservative media. Oh, the Democrats are pushing to fund the police. No, they're not. There are there are leftists that are pushing to fund the police. I'm one of them. I think we should defund the police. Uh, but that's, I realize it's a, that's, that's not a popular position, and especially not a popular position among liberals, among mainstream Democrats. And I'm not talking just the, the uh, politicians, but also Democratic voters. Not a popular position. So I don't know where she gets the uh, idea that like, oh, it's, see, it's it, somehow... All of this is related, what's going on in Canada, is related to defund the police. Ah, they defund, they wanted to defund the police, and now suddenly they want to use the police as an oppressive force against protesters. And I got news for you. They've always wanted to use police as an oppressive force against protesters. It just usually happens to be left-wing protesters that they use the police against. You know, people that were at Occupy Wall Street. People that are defending, uh, uh, you know, defending uh, water. You know, they're water protectors against building brand new pipelines. It just about never gets used against right wing protesters. Now, this is a case that Canada decided, oh, no, we are actually going to use it. Uh, and we are going to actually go a, a little bit tough. Uh, and so now that said, before I get to more uh, of my commentary on that, we've got another video here. Uh, this is what Laura Trump thinks about how tough the police uh, are being against the truckers. Fast forward to February of 2022 in Canada, and Justin Trudeau, who is all everything uh, basically a tyrant would uh, encompass, is using them, it's almost Gestapo-like, to silence his political adversaries, right? These are people that he won't even sit down with. It is tyranny, what you see happening in Canada. And let me tell you something, when you think of a tyrannical government, you often think of places like North Korea. Sean, this is how it starts. They start chipping away one by one at your freedoms until you don't even realize they're gone. They're chipping away. They're chipping away at the freedoms for right-wingers to block the roads and honk at people at all hours of the night. What does that mean for the average Canadian? N not a whole lot. <laughs> now, to be fair, of course, she would be correct, and North Korea wouldn't allow this either. I, I mean, but also, if this were, first of all, it would never happen in North Korea, uh, because the second it would, North Korean police or whatever just would have shot everybody and or forced them into a slave labor camp. So now, you know, the, the, the comparison here between Canada and North Korea, 
a little far-fetched. A little far-fetched. Now, here's the thing, okay? Now, this protest went on for weeks. The Canadian people overwhelmingly disapproved of the protest, nearly three quarters. I showed you the polls uh, a couple videos uh, about this ago. Uh, about three quarters of them, a little less, thought it was time for the protesters to go home. They made their point, and they're really just getting, uh, you're basically getting in the way here. We're not at all interested in this protest. Truckers, alleged truckers, go home. Go home. They made their point. Okay, so now, but apparently, doing some arrests, that's North Korea now. Total North Korea. After letting them go for about a month. So now look, I've said that some of the tactics, like freezing their uh, bank accounts for people who had donated to the truckers, seems a little heavy-handed. Uh, I don't like that. Uh, I, I still agree that that's heavy-handed. It makes me a little uncomfortable, because we know that, of course, down the line, for example, general strike, well... Uh, yes, of course, if that were to be in the United States, and of course, here's the difference. You've got the different governments and stuff, and the different leaders, different checks and balances, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, if this were to happen in the United States, if we were to have a general strike, and there were emergency powers like this, allowing uh, Joe Biden, or it, it doesn't even have to be Joe, Joe Biden. It could be a Republican president, uh, you know, President Josh Hawley. Oh, my God. Uh, imagine, or President Marjorie Taylor Greene uh, could freeze the accounts of leftists who are protesting, well then, <clears throat> yes, that would be that would be terrible. Now, of course, it would be terrible if left had any money, which we don't. Uh, still, nonetheless, right, as much as they disagreed with that, I have no problem with them moving the truckers. In fact, they made an argument saying that they didn't, Trudeau didn't need to enact emergency powers because he just had to get the police to do their job. The police should have been doing their job. They did their job in the other provinces when some of these uh, protests had, had cropped up. Uh, and so they just weren't doing it in Ottawa. And so that said, uh, there's also the matter of what they were protesting against. So now the, the official line for them is, oh, we, we don't like the mandates, which were not set by the Canadian government, set by the United States government. So you're protesting, literally protesting the wrong government and being funded by American interests, right-wing American interests that are sending money overseas uh, that we got from some of the leaks, um, you know, from, from the donations. Uh, and by the way, there was another thing on that. Uh, I actually personally don't like the idea of smaller donor, uh, you know, small donors having their information released. Like, or, or, even their name, right? Um, I think that's a problem. But it's, if you're a gigantic, if you're a millionaire, billionaire, whatever, or a big business, and you're giving to these truckers, then I have no problem with your name being released. You seem to be a public enough figure and to be able to defend yourself enough. Um, that said, right, what they were protesting against is just... Okay, let me, let me start. It's not so much that we're protesting against, but really, the whole purpose behind this was to overthrow Justin Trudeau. I'm no fan of Justin Trudeau. That doesn't mean I support a right-wing protest to try to overthrow the elected, you know, leader of Canada. That seems pretty ridiculous, and I've went through all the right-wing ties that they've had, with white nationalists and separatist groups uh, that the organizers of this protest, and by the way, there's a lot of, I think, good intention people that were suckered into this, by the way. And so you see, oh, working class, oh, non-political, you gotta, how can, if you got a bouncy castle and kids, how could it be a bad thing, right? But you look into these people and you look into what they actually believed in, uh, how, uh, for example, Pat King, uh, one of the, I, I know, uh, oh, he dis he was distanced from, uh, you know, the, the, the actual uh, protest. No, he's an organizer, and he believed in uh, white replacement uh, theory, that we should keep out the Muslims, and also went on anti-Semitic remarks uh, against Jews. So that's the kind of person. And, of course, had had ties with groups that wanted to dissolve the government 
of Canada and jail Justin Trudeau. And so, look, the whole thing obviously seems to be a maybe maybe it even started as a grassroots, but quickly massively co-opted by the far right, if not completely. Um, what is that astroturfed by the far right and their messaging allowed them to reach people who are not are either apolitical or even somewhat lefty uh, and, and, and to try to get them to empathize with these elements of the far right. And so that said, in reality, if you're, if you're against the vaccine, which these people were, no doubt about it. Well, then you're in favor of them clogging up the ER, the emergency rooms with a virus that, again, you could avoid if you get your vaccination. And so that's the issue here. And during a pandemic, which we are still in, I understand that you have to have governments, and I know, I know, right? Sometimes you have to give governments a little bit more power to do things that are not exactly great in order to, you know, like mandates, for example, uh, on, on businesses, like what Biden tried to do to try to stop the pandemic, slow the spread, or at least be able to relieve the pressure on our healthcare systems. That's what government's actually supposed to do. Um, and so, if you're protesting against the government actively trying to stop a pandemic, you might want to think that, hey, maybe I'm the bad guy here because I actually want people uh, to, you know, uh, get sick and, and clog up the hospitals and possibly die. That's what they're doing. But here's the thing. Uh, the right wing, what gets me about the right wing fixation on this, especially the Fox News American media fixation, is that they're reading this is something that it's not. This is not Tiananmen Square. This is not uh, a group that's fighting for human rights. They're fighting for their right to get sick and clog up the ER in a pandemic. That's weird and dangerous. Look, the vast majority, and not dangerous to us, dangerous to them. The vast majority of the people in the ER are unvaccinated COVID patients. That's what's going on here. This is not a working class revolt. This is, again, being funded in large part by American right-wingers. In order to use a vaccine issue, mandates, for example, which are a little bit stronger in Canada than in the United States, as a culture war issue. They're right-wingers in every country. And so Canada is absolutely no exception here. And unfortunately, when you have the culture war, you get disinformation. And that's what's going on here. What Fox News doesn't tell you is that these organizers do have ties to the far right. They despise immigrants. They want to uh, despise, uh, you know, dissolve the Canadian government. They will not tell you that the police, who have generally acted in favor of the Ottawa protesters and allowed the situation to get out of hand because they refused to do their jobs, and now they're being forced to do their jobs. They also don't mention that Canada does not have the same constitution as the United States. They missed that part too, which are able to do uh, some of these things. So now they have their own constitution, they have their own rights, which do not involve apparently blocking an important bridge, harassing locals, accosting people who choose to wear masks, and making noise at all hours of the night and keeping people awake. So I'm sorry, but one more point here, and that's on Black Lives Matter. Once again, the vast majority of Black Lives Matter, those protests were peaceful, 93%. Yeah. Yes. Was there violence? Yes. Was there riots? Of course. Were there people that were arrested? Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, but let's not forget the police in some cases started the altercations with the protesters by attacking them. There were police infiltrations into those groups as well. They snatched reporters off the street. I remember reporting on that. And they dumped them somewhere else. There were people, again, who uh, were agents that tried to cause trouble in order to justify police crackdowns. Now, there's no evidence of any of that that happened in the convoy. I would be very, very surprised if there were. Because right now, we see the right wing handling this with kids' gloves. They always, always do. 
And, and even now, if you handle it with kids' gloves, that's still too much. It's still too much because immediately the far right resorts to crying and calling everyone else Hitler and Kim Jong-un. <laughs> At this point, I don't know. I don't know about you, but I'm tired. I'm tired of them crying about mandates. Mandates that are currently being lifted in numerous different places. We barely have any mandates left in the United States. Much less Canada. And I'm tired of them trying so hard to act like they're an oppressed minority when there's actual depression going on. Like the indigenous community, for example. Is anybody checking in on them? They, they seem to be, uh, you know, oppressed. Water protectors, also oppressed by police. Pipeline protesters. Peaceful pipeline protesters. People that give a damn about black lives. Those are the ones that are actually facing real oppression at the hands of the government and police. Not these crybaby right-wingers.